ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome to session two of uh, this event, this conference. And the title for this session is Bioeconomy from the Regions of Africa, Policy and Strategy. So um, without much ado, I will have about an hour, 30 minutes to discuss this issue of bioeconomy regionalization and the way forward for Africa. And um, as we may have seen from the uh, profiles of my panelists and the session introduction, this session mainly will focus on what is in there for in bioeconomy development for the regions of Africa. And for now, we are looking at the sub-Saharan Africa as we move into other parts of Africa. So my panelists will unpack the concepts, but I know we've been unpacking the concepts since the morning today and highlight some important regional policies and strategies uh, for bioeconomy development. They will also discuss the role of the regional economic community or communities in this case, and the opportunities for intra-Africa cooperation in building sustainable and resilient bioeconomies. My name as a moderator is Nicholas Ozo. I'm the executive director of the African Technology Policy Studies Network, ATPS. ATPS is a transdisciplinary network of researchers, policymakers, civil society actors, and the private sector actors that promote the generation, dissemination, use, and mastery of science, technology, and innovation for Africa's development for global inclusion and environmental sustainability. We work through national chapters located in 30 countries, but we have our headquarters here in Nairobi, Kenya. And we've been around for over 30, 80 years promoting STI on the continent. And with me uh, physically today is Honorable Christoph Bazivamo, uh, who will be speaking on this particular issue. He is the Deputy Secretary General of the East Africa Community, and prior to his appointment as Deputy Secretary General, Honorable Bazivamo was a member of Parliament in the East African Legislative Assembly. He has been a minister in Rwanda for nine years from 2002 until 2011 as Minister for Lands, Environment, Forestry, Water, and Mines, Minister for, of Local Government, and Minister for Agriculture and Animal Resources, among others. So you will agree with me that he is um, fit for, purpose, for this purpose, uh, having been very much grounded with issues around bioeconomy. Also joining me, but virtually, will be uh, Ben Doham. Ben is the Chief Director, Bioinnovation, National Development of Science and Innovation, South Africa. Mr. Ben is Chief Director, Bioinnovation at the National Department of Science and Innovation, in South Africa, where he is involved in the implementation of the South African Bioeconomy Strategy launched in January 2014. He also oversees innovation instruments and initiatives in agriculture, health, industry, and environment, and indigenous knowledge. Permit me also to introduce the Another speaker who will be joining us virtually, 
and he is Ba Saho, and the acting executive director of the Economic Committee of West African States. Mr. Ba Saho is acting executive director of the ECOWA Center for Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency, and has previously served as principal program officer for renewable energy. Under his leadership, the ECOWAS Renewable Energy Program adopted the landmark ECOWAS Renewable Energy and Bioenergy Policies, which seek to advance the uptake of sustainable energy technologies and services for improving energy access. Lastly, uh, we will have Dr. Silas Obukosia, who will be giving us a closing remark. Obukosia is the regional coordinator for East Africa Outer Nepad and principal program officer, uh, Outer Nepad for Africa Development, Africa Biosafety Network of Enterprise, and coordinator of Outer Nepad Regional Office for Eastern Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, to set the pace um, for the discussion we have today, I would like us to watch an introductory video that will enable us hear from some of the bioeconomy stakeholders across uh, Africa on this particular concept that we'll be discussing today. Um, I'll invite the coordinators to please uh, shoot the video for us. Thank you. Many countries are already practicing the bioeconomy, but they don't know. Of course, we have been practicing the bioeconomy, but of course without a strategy. So a strategy is good is, is actually required, not just good. It's required to, to take us from where we are to the next level. So, because there is a lot to do when to, as far as bioeconomy is concerned. Uh, to, to do with the with waste management, uh, to do with the agriculture, to do with the reduction of whatever waste, and the recycling, and the... In, in agriculture productivity improvement, uh, etc. Et uh, bioeconomy strategy for East Africa is a tool, in my opinion, which can allow the region to harness the potential of bioeconomy in various areas. We can cite just the development of competitive green economy. Rwanda, for example, has already a, a green economy strategy. So we want to go green. We have the smart cities strategy. So I do believe that other, other countries have similar policies. And when we agree on the bioeconomy strategy, we can allow those green economies to be implemented in a more integrated. There is also an opportunity to learn from each other. And the same goes divided, we fall, united, we, we stand. So if we have really a solid, robust and integrated bioeconomy strategy in this part of Africa, then it can be a role model for our other parts of Africa where you know, we, we can really complement one another. Uh, because you know, the, 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 the challenge in Ethiopia might affect Kenya. The challenge in Kenya affects Tanzania. So we are really interconnected. So every action we do, unless it's really based on informed, well-designed, uh, you know, strategy, it is very difficult to make a sustainable uh, economic growth. So we, I, I see, um, uh, you know, having uh, a, an integrated bioeconomy strategy is the first step. And countries need to really have the discipline to implement those strategies in a very, uh, you know, um, in a very, uh, you know, relentless, without, any hesitation and then of course you know we we need to have a rigorous monitoring and evaluation mechanisms whether this strategy is really you know bringing the desired results i also think that the, uh, the process of developing the bioeconomy strategy shows that that there's been great interest in that from from the countries 
uh, and that a regional approach, uh, uh, developing a regional bioeconomy strategy to, to guide the national bioeconomy development is, uh, is, is a fruitful uh, approach and could be used also in West Africa and Southern Africa and also Northern Africa, uh, pooling the strength and the competences from, from the various countries together, but also not least uh, thinking of how to create harmonized uh, uh, cert certification standards and, and, uh, and how to uh, support regional trade and continental trade for biobased products. So there's a great opportunity there uh, to be explored. And therefore, I think uh, the regional approach taken by East Africa uh, has been, it, it is, could be very well taken up by, by other regions. I think that, that it would be serve them well. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you have heard it, um, especially our speakers talking about the strategy, the policy, the framework, the actions, the pathways to impact that we want to achieve uh, through bioeconomic development for Africa. Uh, without much ado, the, I wouldn't want to... Um, waste uh, much time, uh, we, we delve directly into the essence of discussing policy and uh, a strategy as a whole generally. We know that uh, policies and strategies and frameworks set uh, the goals, the actions, the pathways in which uh, governments intend to achieve predetermined goals that will enable them to uh, govern its people. And uh, we have heard today, especially from uh, Christian Lang, professor, uh, when he was talk she was talking about the essence of strategy, because the strategy helps us to provide the pathway to impact to, for achieving socioeconomic and political uh, development using through the uh, bioeconomy. I mean, with particular emphasis to bioeconomy. Um, we have had the profiles of our speakers today, and you will agree with me that they are very qualified to speak on this subject uh, based on their experience, based on their positions, in the regional economic communities um, and based on their interest uh, in this particular subject. So uh, I know that we have talked a lot about uh, the concept of bioeconomy, what bioeconomy is all about. Um, but I will first of all come to Honorable, who is uh, physically here with me. Uh, they say charity begins at home. <laughs> before I extend it to those that are at the virtual level, uh, just to having understood what bioeconomy is all about, uh, could you maybe provide us um, some examples from your country or your region uh, on how bioeconomy have been developed and deployed to achieve all these um, objectives that we have mapped out or we have claimed that bioeconomy is going to enable us leapfrog development and uh, uh, sustain uh, livelihoods, uh, income, jobs, and so on and so forth. Are there practical examples that you can use to describe this bioeconomy in action? Uh, from your regional perspective or from your country perspective, sir? So, thank you. I wish maybe to start by saying uh, that when you talk about bioeconomy, we should understand maybe it, you know, 
broader way where we try to link science, science and technology, and consider what we have around us. And in East Africa, you know, we always say we have uh, abundant natural resources, and these are seen uh, in many ways, where you could talk about uh, uh, forest environment, where you could uh, speak about uh, minerals, where you could uh, even talk about uh, the sun we have, uh, or uh, uh, wind we have here and there, and then production. You know, in most of areas it is green, so it means we have a lot of biomass. We do a lot of agriculture. We harvest and you have uh, uh, left waste here and there. So you consider all of this, you link that with science, and try to find out what you can get from uh, these different uh, natural resources by using maybe the best approaches of, uh, I would say, inclusivity, where you don't want to uh, leave a lot of waste, where you will f try to find out how even what is waste or what is called waste can generate some of our income and uh, for the good of our people because at the end, what we consider is uh, our population. How can we, using what we have, in a friendly environmental uh, approaches, uh, ensure sustainability of our production and then uh, sustain the livelihoods of our population? So I would say that uh, even traditionally, when you are doing uh, agriculture livestock, uh, you can link agriculture and then uh, livestock getting uh, the waste from animals, using them for improving the productivity, and also getting the results, uh, which is considered as waste after you have harvested, and to transform this in rich manure, which can be used to increase again productivity. These are things which are happening uh, in our region. When you see, for instance, uh, the uh, biogas production, uh, where you are take, taking uh, maybe waste from a produ pro, pro agriculture production or even from animal production and transform this in energy uh, these are approaches which can actually be pushed forward, and uh, it is happening already. We are producing energy using wind, using uh, solar, we are producing biomass. Uh, in this kind of economy, if you try to maximize the use of this and that in a complementary way, I think uh, uh, you can have these different examples on what is happening on the ground, and also you know, we have had Rwanda talking about uh, green uh, 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 policy or green strategy. Uh, and here we talk also about uh, green, uh, uh, no, clean, clean industry, eh, where you are pushing for actually having the minimum waste and uh, trying to, pro to, to promote clean production in a sustainable way when you there are many examples. When you talk about biodegradable packaging industries, these are things which can actually be seen as uh, examples, which can be, if it is done uh, maybe at a smaller scale, which can be uh, extended, expanded, so that they can uh, actually become the, the normal instead of, uh, of seeing them as exception. Uh, because when you compare, you compare this kind of production, it is not promoted as it should be promoted. And this different example can be upscaled and uh, keep on this approach with a new strategy, then uh, 
having them common, not yeah. as exceptions. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I, I, would, I, would, I would want to take it further from there. Um, to Yes, you've given some examples from different uh, sectors. Uh, a follow-up question is, I believe that these examples you, you've given are not like on paper. There are physical examples in terms of industries, uh, converting waste to wealth, and using all these biological resources to uh, create wealth and so on and so forth. So uh, if there are those, do you, what will you say is, um, could be, I, 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 I heard you here mentioning using some statistics, could, could you say is the kind of contribution that these bioeconomy industries or initiatives or innovations have made to uh, the, the GDP, that's exactly what you used, um, of economies in the region. How would you say is the percentage contribution? Or can you propose or guess how much, because we want to know, is this thing emerging? Is, has it taken shape already? How is the contribution uh, trend uh, increasing or decreasing or being st static? Something like that. So thank you. Let me say that uh, in the common life from the past, you move from uh, an economy in Africa, which were, was uh, like uh, based actually on bio. Yeah? If you consider the history of Africa, uh, we have been moving like that. It's only uh, recent when we have uh, uh, been in contact with uh, Europe and uh, developed countries that the change has come, where actually the market for uh, Europa products and uh, elsewhere has been influencing actually the change of approaches in our different countries. So it means the adoption of new uh, innovation from uh, developed countries has a bit slowed down, down what we were doing. And you know, this uh, uh, fossil oil economy has been uh, to a fire, pro, uh, fire front promoted and it is the same which has actually uh, taken the, the lead. Now we are trying like going back and trying to reverse the process, but not 100%, but maybe uh, compromising. There are things you cannot remove 100%, but just come back and try to readjust, improve. If you go in agriculture, we have been doing agriculture without fertilizers, without insecticides, and uh, what was brought was uh, from uh, 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 industries, manufactured one. But you know, you can also produce bio fertilizers, you can produce bio pesticide uh, here and there. But unfortunately, again, we have to balance between the needs of a growing population and then the increase of productivity using, using this and, and that. I would say that if you consider the situation in which we are, bioeconomy is playing a role, but not recognized the role. Because uh, kind of analysis to try to find out which is the right contribution has not been done so far in a, a, a wide scale. But uh, one could say that uh, when you see what is happening in agriculture, when you see what is happening in pharmaceutical, when you see what is happening in industry in general, uh, you, you will say you are using a lot of uh, fossil oil for the time being. And uh, in bioeconomy uh, consideration, I would say you are not maybe above uh, 30%, between 10 and 30%. But yeah. these are just estimates from my uh, <laughs> kind of thinking, <laughs> because there is yeah. no thorough studies or clean uh, clear analysis which has been done around this. 
but uh, looking back, we find out that uh, actually the contribution is huge. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much for exhaustively uh, discussing that. Uh, let me come to you, um, uh, Ben Donham. You are with us? Yes, I am. Very good. So um, you listened to Honorable uh, when he was making his uh, uh, first uh, di uh, discussions on this, and uh, he talked about different sectors of bioeconomy. And um, I would want to kind of, uh, uh, as an expert and someone who has traveled and walked around this uh, uh, um, new initiative, which sector would you say is the most important uh, sector for bioeconomic development or transformation, either in your country or region or for Africa? And uh, why would you uh, say that? Excellent. Uh, great, great question. Um, what, what I would say to that is it's very difficult to pick out just one in the sense that there are a variety of sec sectors which have different motivators, different drivers, and different outcomes and, and impacts. And depending on who you are talking to, the different sectors will, will be more appealing or less appealing to them. So obviously agriculture features very highly because uh, the African continent, the, the GDP is largely based on agricultural pr uh, production and to some extent on agro-processing. So it's creating jobs and providing the, the, the food. But nevertheless, health is obviously also a critically important one. Uh, the Society of Africa is in need of health solutions, given that we have a high infectious disease rate and, and so on. Um, and, and so health has got its definite appeals. When we look at uh, the impacts of climate change, though, we need to recognize that industrial biotech has got enormous potential to transform industries such that, as has been mentioned, we can have a far uh, greater um, environmentally friendly approach with a reduced carbon footprint. And, and then the, the last point that I would make is indigenous knowledge is a, a very strong phenomenon in Africa. And here in South Africa, we are... Um, exploiting indigenous knowledge, we are harnessing it for the benefit of the people. Um, moderator, perhaps I can uh, share my slides um, and, and give my presentation with, with your blessing. <laughs> um, well, it depends. I hope uh, it will be a very short one, uh, considering time constraints that we have. I would gladly want to um, see such um, presentation, especially if uh, it's short and uh, answering to some of these issues we have uh, raised. Please, how, do you have an idea of how long it is? Uh, it's eight slides, but they will be, it, it will be a short presentation. Okay, I'll give you five minutes to present the eight slides. Great, great. Can, can you see my screen? Yes, you can enlarge it. Great. Great. So just, just a very brief presentation talking to what's happened in South Africa. And, and firstly, thanks to the organizers for the invitation. It's always good to engage on the bioeconomy topic in, in Africa where we all believe it has so much potential. So just a, a brief overview of where our bioeconomy strategy came from. Uh, democracy started in South Africa in 1994 and in 1996, 
we had a white paper on science and technology that looked at repositioning the science system to address the needs of all of uh, the South African society, not just a, a group of it. And so we were looking at science and technology for poverty reduction, energy, water and sanitation, sanitation and food security. Then in 2001, we published our biotechnology strategy. Um, this was a strategy that sought to develop our capabilities in biotechnology. And I note this followed after the uh, development of our GMO Act. So even before the biotech strategy, we had developed a policy to guide the introduction of GMOs into South Africa. Um, then we developed a 10-year innovation plan that looks across the whole of the Department of Science and Innovation and bioeconomy was one of the features. And then in 2013, we published our new strategy, the bioeconomy strategy, which differed substantially from the biotech strategy in that it's focusing on the economic, particularly the economic, but the socioeconomic outputs of biotechnology on the broader economy. So quite a different uh, approach, not just developing the skills, but looking at the value chains and how to uh, develop biotech products such that they reach the market and have a socioeconomic impact. Um, then we've redeveloped our white paper on science technology and the difference is it's now also on innovation where we're focusing very strongly on, on innovation and we are currently about to publish our decadal plan which talks to the implementation of, of that. Um, so, so what is the bioeconomy? Very briefly, in, in Europe, it comprises those parts of the economy that use renewable biological resources from land and sea uh, to produce food, materials and energy. Th that's the European definition. In South Africa, we have a slightly different take and we are saying that it's activities that use bio-innovations based on biological resources, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. And it's the entire innovation system network ranging from ideas and research through to manufacturing and commercialization. And it's in these four main areas at the bottom, health innovation, agricultural bioinnovation, industry and environmental biotech, biotech and indigenous knowledge-based uh, innovation. So the European definition is recycle, reuse, sustainable and green, whereas the South African thing focuses very much more on the socioeconomic outcomes of this remarkable technology. So quite a, a difference, although still talking to the same bioeconomy. So three key features in the future. Uh, precision um, is becoming a, a, a very strong component of a bioeconomy. And if we're looking at healthcare for all, we are developing genomic and precision medicine that is already starting to have an impact on, on healthcare. In agriculture, there's precision agriculture. We're looking at supporting uh, small scale farmers and developing uh, nutrition. Uh, improving nutrition, but with the precision side, we are improving the ability to produce, to be more productive on every hectare of land. Uh, a second feature of the bioeconomy is convergence. Um, the market is not looking for a solution that is based on one discipline. It wants a holistic uh, solution. So really we are talking to the convergence of ideas. Um, examples are bringing together indigenous knowledge and science to create new products, biotech and traditional industry, um, new ways to manufacture as, as some examples to improve competitiveness, um, wealth and job creation. The third one is looking at value addition from, from biomass and there are different categories of this, but ultimately this is from renewable and uh, primary productive resources. So effectively you are growing your wealth. Uh, second last slide, South Africa has uh, measured its bioeconomy. This is not yet published, but we are attributing approximately 8% of our GDP to the bioeconomy. It is likely that elsewhere in Africa, this will be much higher given that um, agriculture forms a much stronger part of other um, economies. In South Africa, it's only 2% of our um, economy, agriculture directly, but one, one and a half million people are employed in the bioeconomy in South Africa. 
and this is the number of students, this is the sales that we we having um, and and exports. And we note that the there is an increasing unit value of exports, which means that the sophistication of the uh, products is increasing. And then last uh, slide, and, and this is just a very brief overview, that the future of the bioeconomy is to um, more strongly establish the outputs and impacts from, from the bioeconomy. It's, it's really important to develop the value chains, and we've been through the phases of skills development and developing the value chains, addressing the, the gaps and challenges, and what we are aiming in the next uh, period is to increase the outputs and impacts. And we recognize that we are just one country on the continent and one country in the world, and it is critically important that we develop the partnerships across the continent and globe because we are all in the same boat together. We need to mitigate the human impact on the environment, and we need to ensure that there is sustainable development. With that, I, I thanks very much, and I'm looking forward to the further engagement. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, um, Ben. I think you already predicted most of the questions I was going to throw to you, <laughs> and uh, you just uh, used this uh, one silver bullet to answer most of them. Uh, but yet, before you drop, um, I've seen some great achievements uh, from the South African side. Uh, my question or follow-up question will be, uh, how did you get there as a country? And how do you think, because South Africa has made great effort, how can the SADC region learn from what you have done and now develop because we don't have a bioeconomy strategy or policy for SADEC. Uh, is there any lessons you think that SADEC can that SADEC can learn or are there roles you think you can play as the chief director here to ensure that what South Africa has is uh, upscaled to uh, SADEC and by extension uh, ECOWAS as while the East Africa community is still finding their grounds to operationalize their own strategy. So what are the, how did you get there? And what lessons can be learned for others so that we can leapfrog? We don't want to fall into the pits you had fallen into while you were undertaking these processes. Thank you. Great, Nicholas. Thanks very much. Good, good question. Um, I, I think the process started in South Africa because our political leaders recognised the potential of biotechnology and the development of a bioeconomy. So I think that is possibly the most critical factor: is ensuring that there's political will and r adequate recognition of the power and the potential. Of, of biotechnology. Um, what what I, I mentioned, we started with a biotechnology strategy and then in 2013, 2014, we developed a bioeconomy strategy. Um, the, the key feature, the, the key difference is that it's not enough to develop skills. As a government official, what you want to be sure of is that the value chains are uh, well enough developed and robust to allow good ideas to go through their development phases and ultimately reach the market. Um, so, for example, a, a health product, you need to make sure that the regulatory authority has the appropriate skills and capabilities in order to regulate health products. It's no good developing a health product when there is not the policy and regulatory capability in the country. So there, there are a whole range of steps and, and challenges that need to be looked at on the value chain to make sure that a good idea, a good biotechnology idea, has an opportunity of reaching the market. So a, another critical factor is then looking at that value chain. 
the, the third most important point that, that I will uh, raise is partnerships with industry. Um, as, as a government official, we tend to think that we are creating the, the vision and the opportunity, but without industry participation, without industry and academic participation, it's very unlikely that you are going to get the groundswell of movement to carry these good ideas across the value chains that you've developed into the market. Industry has the skills, um, industry has the capability, and industry has the financial resources to champion products, to take them across the value chain and guide their introduction into the market, something that both academia and government are not particularly good at. So the, the, the last point I'm emphasizing really is it's about partnerships. And then you, you asked about um, uh, across the continent in, in Africa, Definitely, there are so many lessons that South Africa has learned from this, this um, from our journey over the last 20 years in, in developing our bioeconomy. And we would be only too happy to share, whether individually or in conferences such as this, the, the lessons that we've learned and the, the processes that we followed. And the, the, the last point that I will say um, is that we need to recognize that biotechnology is incredibly broad. It can be applied across the manufacturing industry, the health sectors, the agricultural sectors, and there are so many applications of biotechnology that it's not as though any one country can corner the market. This is about developing uh, biotechnology-based products that are suitable to each individual application, each different uh, country, each different region, and the different continents. There is still such enormous potential in biotechnology and in developing the bioeconomy, but it's done through partnership. This is a skills-based development, and we need to make sure that we are sharing the knowledge and developing these collaborative partnerships for development. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, you have said it all. Um, very powerful. And then, um, as um, a policy analyst, uh, what you said earlier really touched me about uh, political leadership. Because uh, my organization, the ATPS, uh, we believe, we usually say that politics is superior to science. And most times, scientists try to fight us when we make that statement. Uh, but we also established that an STI-led development is a political endeavor. There is no way you can develop or leapfrog STI development without the political goodwill. And it is the political goodwill which you have re-emphasized uh, today alongside with um, other factors like capacity, skills, a collaboration, partnership with industry and research that have enabled you to uh, come this far. So uh, while I allow you to um, li listen a bit, um, I don't know whether Baha Saho eventually joined us. Uh, he did not join us from ECOWAS. And uh, this is uh, really uh, not so good because... Um, uh, ECOWAS has not made, uh, um, we really want them to learn these lessons and we see how we um, integrate or join forces to have uh, uh, them on board with re respect to bioeconomy development. But we will not, we will not uh, end here. We will continue to uh, push to reach them so that they participate maybe in um, other activities that uh, BioInnovate Africa will be promoting around this. So, uh, Honorable, I will come back to you now that you, you have listened uh, very thoroughly and uh, from your experience, um, you just developed your uh, bioeconomy strategy as presented, and I would want to uh, know how you've been able to collaborate with some 
uh, agencies, commissions, like National Commission or National um, Councils for Science and Technology or ministries or agencies. So can I know the kind of collaboration? Because if ECOWAS was to be here, I believe there are stakeholders from ECOWAS who are also listening to us and uh, they will take this message to the appropriate authorities. Uh, so if a sub region, if a region like ECOWAS wants to um, commence the process of learning from you to a, a develop a bioeconomy strategy or policy, how, what advice will you give them on how to start in terms of uh, engagement with uh, the relevant actors up to coming to this point where you now proudly say you have a bioeconomy strategy? Uh, thank you. Uh, I wish to say that uh, uh, East African community is just lucky uh, by uh, its setting. From the start, the partner state of East African community are normally requested to collaborate and it should not be a choice, it's a must. Because they have ratified the treaty for the establishment of East African community. And under the treaty, there are clauses which clearly highlight sectors or areas of cooperation. And among them, STI is one of the areas of cooperation. The original body, which is the Secretariat, and uh, together with its institutions, once there is this uh, ideas, Article 71 of the treaty requests actually the Secretariat to come with ideas and then to drive consultations among partner states so that a decision can be taken. And in that process, we, East African community, have luckily enough the East African Science and Technology Commission as an institution, which is requested actually to lead in that area of science and technology. The setting I was speaking, speaking about, it's a decision-making process, which normally, once you have this idea, having used maybe a consultant to move throughout the community and to understand how is the status, which are the challenges, and what could be the benefit of moving that direction, come up with a proposal. And then, with the proposal, we are requested again to move throughout to convene these people involved in this National Science and Technology Commission to bring them together to discuss towards improving the document and reaching it. And once they are happy with the content, now we bring on board for decision making. Uh, people who are our ministers and the later on if we need to be for summit for head of state. In the process of coming with a, a, a document to be adopted by ministers, then you convene also the expert in different ministries and institutions and private sector who are interested or however linked for the area, with the area you are dealing with. They come together, discuss. Later on, the report is considered by the permanent secretaries or principal secretaries, preparing for the ministers in charge to come in and to take the decision. So by doing so, once the ministers have taken a decision, 
This become now original document, but it is not enough because you have not stopped there. Once you have this region one, which is normally also validated at different uh, partner states at national level, you have to go back and sell it. And this is a process which is normally when you talk about uh, awareness creation, ad advocacy, uh, the idea behind is to bring these political uh, people on board, to bring stakeholders on board, so that we build a kind of ownership towards sustain, sustained implementation. So this is the idea, the process we have been using it, but now I think and it's still needed selling this, marketing the strategy, going back to the communities, to the different stakeholders, public, private, NGOs, and talking about the importance of it and bringing people on board in the day-to-day -day businesses to ensure they are doing the right thing. So we have done steps, but we still need actually to emphasize for full adoption of our approach. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable. Actually, you just uh, also uh, predicted my what I would have asked again. Uh, my question would have been, what is the next steps? And I'm happy that you have captured it very well uh, by saying that uh, in as much as the, reg the regional block has adopted this strategy, there is still a lot to be done in terms of marketing, in terms of selling this strategy for it to be domesticated at the different countries. And um, this is what you see uh, as uh, the next steps for this strategy that you have developed um, uh, at, the, at the regional block. So thank you very much. I, I really appreciate that. And uh, for the uh, country, uh, countries in the region that uh, have participated in this, uh, we have had uh, the Honorable and what he has said about next steps. I think um, doing the, the issue of advocacy and domestication like you also pointed out, is not left for one person. And uh, one thing I, I also uh, um, that I, I admired from your speech is when you are talking about institution. Institution is very important. For instance, you mentioned uh, ISTECO as an institution that has that uh, mandate to rally around other stakeholders to do this dirty job for you and come up with this good result. So um, uh, that is the importance of institution. And we'll continue to promote good institutions in our different regional blocks to enable us to take, apart from developing good initiatives, but also take it forward towards domestication. And uh, uh, like I was trying to say, different actors will come in now to help in this domestication. So civil society actors, the ministries, the private sector, as we have had, because they are the ones that we take up these innovations coming from bioeconomy development to commercialize, create jobs, and also improve livelihoods. Uh, we know that uh, time is not our, uh, on our side, um, and that uh, maybe just to come back to you, uh, Ben, I know you, you, your, your presentation was very holistic, but then uh, can you just tell me the role that the private sector played strictly in this uh, uh, bioeconomy development process in your, in your country? And how, uh, because your previous, my previous question to you, I wanted to know your role, what you can do to take this Great. I seem to be having a network problem. Can you hear me? We, we are hearing you. Great. Excellent. Thank you. Um, thanks very much for the question. I, I just want to support what the Honorable Bazivamo um, just said. The, the bioeconomy is not something that you can just take off the shelf and implement. It 
it is a journey. There are various steps, there are various phases of development of a bioeconomy that that need to be followed through. And it, it's also important to recognize that what works in South Africa, what works in North America, what works in Asia is not exactly what will work on the on our continent and in each different country. So this is a learning process and, and we would in, encourage that you try and learn the lessons from um, other experiences, but ultimately to apply biotechnology in a country is a complex matter and it, it it's something that needs to be nurtured and grown and developed. So a, a critical point that the the uh, the, the Honorable Bazivamo has, has made. Then with with respect to your question, the, the role of the private sector um, and the importance. Um, when when we started out with our biotech strategy, um, a huge portion of the investment that was made in biotechnology was through government. Um, I'm, I'm not denying that industry was also investing in biotechnology, but these were two separate and parallel streams. And our focus, our, our government focus was, was on developing cap capacities and capabilities, whereas industry was focusing much more on the development of, of new products. And what has proved to be far more productive um, in, in the process is by bringing industry and government together. And, and I'm, I'm not uh, undermining the importance of academia and NGOs and civil society. They are critical too, but nevertheless, the, the industry now is critical in working with us. They, they sit on um, our steering committees and they guide, they help guide our investments such that what we are investing in has the best opportunity of, of success. So, for example, we don't just support um, postgraduate students. We support postgraduate students in areas where industry is helping to identify as having an employment opportunity and a growth area for the industry. So there's, there's a greater probability now that students that are trained in biotechnology are going to find application. That, that's one area. The, the second point to note is that the investment that the South African government is making in biotechnology um, so our, our gross expenditure on R and D is around 0.8 of 0.8 of a percent of our GDP. So it's less than one percent. And if you compare this to OECD countries, which range from two and a half up to four or even more percent of GDP, you, you recognize that the South African investment is small. And so what we need to do is make our investments so much more efficient. And we, as, as I said, we do this in partnerships with others to make sure that what we are doing is most likely to have success. The, the last point that I want to make is that through these partnerships, we have leveraged more money than we are putting into biotechnology ourselves. So by the merging of minds of industry and government and academia and civil society, we are making sure that we are leveraging the resources necessary to undertake the developments. So bottom line, from a government perspective, we can achieve so much more because of these partnerships. And it's not that we are giving our money to, to industry and saying, run with it. We are, this is a genuine partnership where we discuss what, what we see as the important issues. Industry will present what they think are important. And where there is overlap and common interest, that is where we are co-investing on, on projects. And so far, industry and government are very happy about this partnership because we are achieving so much more than if we would be doing it individually. And uh, SADC? The, the role of SADC? Yes. So 
this, this is something that that has been uh, lagging behind. It is it is something that we recognise, we in South Africa recognise as something that we need to to further develop. Um, we have a program called SANBIO, the South, Southern African Nas uh, um, Network for Biosciences, similar to the ECOWAS and uh, the, the the four regions of of Africa under the the AU, so Sandbio is our initiative in the SADC region where we are partnering with the different countries, and we've identified different um, theme projects. And what we seek to do then is get partnerships from from the region in developing those projects or programs or capacity development initiatives, what, whatever they, they are. So SANBIO is of growing importance or, or the networking. We've also got something called the International Center for Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology, which is an Italy, uh, Italian hosted um, initiative for the developing world. And South Africa has the third leg of, of this ICGEB. The, the first one is in Trieste in Italy. The second one is in New Delhi in India. And we have one in Cape Town in South Africa. The, the point that we made um, when taking on the third leg of the ICGEB is that it's not an ICGEB uh, center for South Africa. It's an ICGEB for Africa. And we are strongly encouraging, and some of you definitely will have engaged on ICGEB programs, um, we are strongly encouraging the ICGEB to expand its footprint into Africa and to increase the collaboration and, and partnerships. Um, that's not limited just to SADC, that's across the, the, the whole continent. But bottom line is it is of critical importance to develop partnerships in the region and across the continent. All right. Thank you very much for emphasizing on those institutions that could take it forward. Uh, as, as we conclude uh, this session, Honorable, um, I would want you to wrap up uh, th in 30 seconds. One minute. Uh, what can you say uh, will be the role of policy or strategy in strengthening bioeconomic development in, in Africa or in the region? So thank you. Uh, throughout, we have been saying it is possible. The most important thing is to to know about it. Uh, it is there. It is possible. It can be upscaled, but we we have to own it. So. The issue of awareness creation, bringing on the table decision makers, building partnership, not only under public sector, but uh, public sector, private sector, and using all means, including parliamentarians, so that this ownership can be there is very, very key. And I trust in it. It is possible. Let us move together. We shall achieve. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable. Uh, ownership, very important. Awareness creation, very important. Um, I will come back to you, Ben. Just 30 seconds, wrap up. Final idea. Great, thank you. So in, in taking the bioeconomy forward, it's critical to recognize that we need to create an enabling environment for biotechnology. Um, and, and this is multifaceted, but what we want to do is make sure that the biotechnology ideas have every chance of success. So we need to recognize that biotechnology is often science-based and it is critical that we develop capacities in, in science. We need to, and this is a point I've been pushing, we need to recognize the importance of partnerships, that you can do so much more with partnerships. We need to recognize that the movement of an idea uh, towards the market 
goes across various steps in a value chain and you need to be aware of that value chain and make sure that it has the necessary support and infrastructure and regulatory support um, to enable it. And you need to recognize that ideas are developed by people, by entrepreneurs, by innovators, and you need to be able to support these people to make sure that they are enabled in taking their, their products to, to market. So bottom line is we need to create a broad enabling environment for the bioeconomy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Broad enabling environment necessary for bioeconomy development. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are coming to uh, the end of this session. Uh, but before then, we will have a poll question which we we would want to uh, want those that are online to answer as we as uh, dr silas obukosia gets ready to give us a closing remark uh, for this session so the poll question is which sector of your country's economy would you first propose for bioeconomy development to be prioritized. Which sector of your country's economy would you first propose for uh, bioeconomy development to be prioritized? So we take uh, 30 seconds. The results Can we see the results online? Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. So we have uh, waste management and environment, 33%, pharmaceuticals, um, 17%. Oops. So most, most of the responses, um, um are uh, gearing towards environment, waste management, and pharmaceuticals. So with this, as we continue to get responses, I think uh, it's over now. Uh, other, other sectors are getting gradually. Agriculture. Um, great. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This is just to give us and a brief overview of, of um, okay, food, pulp, and paper has come in. Biotechnology, 4%, food, 4%. Uh, weight has dropped to 25%. Uh, so keep voting, and uh, maybe by the time we finish, we will know. But remember, like uh, Ben said, there is no one size fits it all. Uh, there is need for contextualization, uh, for situational analysis, depending on how it fits and uh, fits your country. So at this point, I want to invite Dr. Silas to give us a closing remark. Silas is from Auda Nepad. Over. Thank you, Nicholas. I, will, I want to appreciate the speakers, and I will just uh, I picked up some very common points that they have all talked about. The first key point that comes out is that uh, Africa has a lot of biodiversity that came up from the video and came up from the minister. So, so we have it actually. The second point that came out that was very strong is that uh, we need a regional approach and the regional approach should fit into the national approach. Yes. And the other very important point came out that uh, we need a strategy, and, and I think the chair Nicholas said it's, it's a pathway through which you can measure impact. Yeah. Then he mentioned one very important point so that we can know the social economic contribution of this by economy to the to, to African nation. Yeah. So that came out to be very strong and very important. Yeah. The other point why we need a strategy was that when Nicholas asked what is the percent of bioeconomic contribution here, the minister gave an estimate of 10 to 30 percent, South Africa they gave an estimate of 8 percent, but still the figure don't clear. 
and that underlines the need for the strategy why we need here. We got other sharing from Africa. What sector is most important? And he said, it depends on whom you talk to, but talk of agriculture may feature highly, health may feature highly, industry is also very important, especially for transformation, and they mentioned the indigenous knowledge. But the key thing there is, 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 is that they, they, they say they, they categorized their section into, into four, health innovation, agriculture, industry and environment, and gymnasium. One very important point was uh, what is an example of national development of a strategy? And South Africa being a good example where, for example, they followed the political support. Then first of all, they worked on biotech strategy and then they worked on a bioeconomy strategy. But most important, he said that we need a value chain approach. And let got value chain approach, we will be able to have some, some robust program. Yeah. But lastly, he said we need partnerships with the industry and academia. That is very important. If, if, we, if, if we can have a sustainable bioeconomy strategy. Yeah. Honorable Minister shared about an example of a regional approach, and they used the East African platform where they have got a secretariat, then they have got East African Science for Technological Cooperation, then the ministers making the decisions, then of course they have, have partnerships, partnerships coming on strongly. But the last point, which was emphasized, is come out so many times, these things need to be domesticated here. Yeah. They need to be awareness, creation, advocacy for us to have ownership here. Yeah. The last question was, what is the role of, of the private sector? And Ben gave some very nice, interesting uh, 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 points. He said a uh, bioeconomy development is a step by step, but you can't cut and paste. There will be continental specific approaches. There will be country specific approaches here. And he gave a very interesting thing that uh, countries need to invest a lot in bioeconomy. He gave 0.8% point, point for South Africa and OECD, they are at 3 to 4% of the GDP is, 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 is I think, uh, 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 invested uh, in uh, science, technology, and, and I think that is very, very much challenging, actually. Yeah. Then he mentioned one thing that I want to underline over and over, we need more of industry support, we need the government support, we need the academic support, and we need the civil society support, yeah. So we see examples, we have got the resources, we need a strategy, there are examples at the national, examples at the regional, but we need private sector involvement and domestication of this year. So, Chairman, I'll stop there. I think my first minutes are over. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate this uh, summary, which has really captured um, and summarized all that we've been discussing uh, today in this session. So, ladies and gentlemen, I would want you to appreciate our speakers. Please throw a clap uh, for them, please. Thank you very much. I thank uh, everyone that have contributed uh, to this uh, discussion. God bless.